Oh yeah. Oh yeah, we're gonna be field tripping today. Hey. I think Karen wants to come too. This Karen is like can come. This is like every day. Yeah. I think she has attachment issues to her dad. Karen, say hello to the world. Everybody missed you, Karen. Everybody talks about you all the time. They talk about you more than they talk about us. You're like the Karen. You're like the Karen of all Karens. What's the ultimate Karen? It's you. You're the ultimate Karen. Who's a good bird? Oh, oh, you got excited for that one, huh? Who's excited? Who's a good turkey? Who's an excited turkey? Gary's an excited turkey. Are you an excited turkey, bud? Always. 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 You could just taste the excitement coming out of his breath. Good bird. All right, let's do it. I came from the mud, there's dirt on my hands. Strong like a tree, there's roots where I stand. Oh, I've been running from the law. This won't make sense to you guys on the uh, on the YouTube, but you know we're working to get somewhere to do some damn work, and we just keep getting sidetracked for hours. So, special treat, you see that right there, CWL, Chandler's Wildlife. For anybody that's on my YouTube channel that doesn't subscribe to Chandler's Wildlife already, um, I'm gonna put it right here at the bottom of the screen, right here in this area, right here, right here. We're gonna put it right there. Go to his, I would send the link or put it in the description, but I don't know how to do any of that stuff, so you guys are on your own. Go ahead and join Chandler at Chandler's Wildlife. And that's exactly where we're going today because Chandler is in Australia living the dream while we're out here doing his peasant work. So I gotta clean his animals, make sure everything's good over here at the outpost where he's keeping all his venomous stuff at the moment. Make sure the museum's good, make sure his animals are good, make sure we stay on top of everything. And uh, we're gonna be doing some epic shit today. We're gonna be doing the King Cobras. If they, I'm not gonna take them out if they didn't shit because there's really no need for it. But we're on the way. We're almost there, right? I guess. I'm just dragging her around <laughs> all over the place today. So, all right. We'll see you guys in a minute. Boom. It's on. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. So we're in the Mecca. I guess. We're at, we're at Chandler's Wildlife. Today, I'm, I'm like, I'm Chandler today, bro. I'm Chandler's Wildlife. Again, guys, if you're on my channel, I'm sure that everybody on my channel already knows Tyler, Will, Chandler, the whole group of us or whatever. We were friends long before the YouTube started, so it's not like we just got together because of the YouTube, but I'm sure you guys have already heard of him and seen his channel. If you haven't, I'm gonna put it again, right here. I can't get any more painfully obvious. Chandler's Wildlife. Visit that on YouTube. He's got a ton of videos out there. The kid's been doing it for a long, long time, and he has some amazing content that I think you guys are gonna enjoy. So, this place is coming along. When he first came over here, this is the Everglades Outpost. For anybody that ever visits South Florida, come check this place out. It's a sanctuary, it's got a ton of stuff. They have big cats, they have bears, they have wolves, and then Chandler, and they have their alligators and crocodiles. I can't forget that. And then Chandler's got a spot in here where it's the museum slash Serpentarium. So he kind of worked out a deal where he could bring his animals here, set up a bunch of stuff for them, and they kind of work together. Chandler's got a place to keep his stuff, and then the outpost gets to display his stuff, and it's actually coming along really well. You can take a circle, Jet. You can take a circle with that shit. Look at this amazing stuff. Bunch of bioactive setups all the way around. So all these glass tanks, bioactive. He's got a little rack back there. That's my rack, by the way. He's got that rack back there for uh, quarantine, whole day areas, but then he's got this, oh my goodness. Ladies and gentlemen, 
This right here is the all time coolest freshwater turtle on the face of this earth. This is the Fly River Turtle. Guess where they come from, Jackie? Where? Guess. Just guess. The Fly River? Oh my God, you're so good. Ah, wow. So, these guys are extremely amazing. It almost reminds me of, it's kind of like a sea turtle. Look at that thing, it's amazing. So they need a huge space. These are super rare. There's a bunch in the States, but it's like a handful. So it's like really high-end private collectors or zoos that will have these guys here. And they're extremely amazing. Again, one of my favorite species of turtle. I'm not a huge turtle guy, but I would have a thousand of these all day long. What we're here to do today is essentially, I'm here to make sure that Chandler can have an amazing life everywhere else in the world. So <laughs> I'm here to make sure that he can vacation without having to stress about his animals. So the outpost is taking care of all the small stuff, they're feeding, cleaning all the, you know, the little guys or whatever. And I'm here to take care of the bigger snakes, like the king cobras and stuff. And we're gonna get to that in a minute. So we're gonna do some normal, cleaning stuff. I gotta come back here too. So we'll do a couple of episodes of Chandler's Wild Life. We'll call it Justin's Wild Chandler's Life. Does that make sense? No. Justin's Wild Chandler Life? That Justin's? We'll figure it out. Sounds a little we're gonna exotic. Dive we're gonna dive in. <laughs> we'll figure something out. We're gonna figure something out. But I'll do some separate episodes for anybody that doesn't have Chandler on their YouTube. Subscribe. Don't forget. Um, I'll do some separate episodes with a couple of different animals. We're not gonna get too crazy. This isn't my stuff. So we'll do like maybe like one or two episodes or something like that. And then for all the rest of the stuff, go to Chandler's Wildlife on YouTube. Subscribe to that stuff. Okay, so we're gonna start by putting this guy up. This is actually a really good rack system. Ladies and gentlemen, for all you guys out there that use racks, let me see if I can find my stuff. Without getting bit in the ass. Racks are not a bad thing, but you gotta figure the species that you have versus how you're keeping the animal. Um, Chandler's got some rhino vipers in here right now and some other elapids. Not a terrible thing, but these guys here, the rhino vipers and like puff adders and stuff, will usually do better off in an enclosure like your visions over here, which is what Chandler's been doing is basically moving all these animals for two reasons. Number one, it's a little bit better for them. And number two, obviously, it's display. We're in a museum. Once this is all finished up, it's just gonna be all displays. You won't see a rack and you won't see enclosures that you can't see the animals. You wanna see the animals. So he's in the middle of moving all that stuff around. The rest of the stuff in here is a lapis. He's got some smaller cobras in here. A rack, I feel, is actually really good for your smaller species of cobra. Most of the time, your smaller lapids are gonna wanna hide We'll show you when we get to the cage, but they're gonna to wanna to hide under something, even in a cage like this. So the rack system actually gives them a little bit more security, they feel a little bit more comfortable, and they'll actually do a little bit better in the rack system, provided that it's a smaller species of animal. Obviously, you can't foot or fit a nine foot cobra in the rack, so you gotta pay attention to the size of your snake versus the size of the enclosure you're keeping in. You never want a huge, nine foot snake stuffed in here like a little sausage. You don't want that. Not good for the animal, not good for you. It makes it dangerous when you're cleaning and it also makes it dangerous for the animal to get in there. So let's see what else we got. Oh my God. I didn't even know he had this. Shame on you little devil. Oh yes I did, it's the two little ones. Okay, so these are not venomous. I know Chandler's super excited to get to, I think he's gonna be doing a bioactive for these guys as well. When they're small, these are your little green anacondas. And these things used to be so common. They would come in from South America nonstop. But um, as of late, I think two years ago, maybe three years ago, because I'm terrible with time, they, they put the ban out. So these are no longer imported from the wild into the States, highly illegal to do that. But there still is a bunch of breeders around the States that you could purchase these guys from. Not a great idea for a pet. You gotta think of how big these animals get. It's the second largest snake on the planet. The largest being um, your reticulated python as far as the size that it gets. But as far as like weight, this guy takes the cake. These guys are getting upwards of like 200 pounds. 
I have a buddy up north that's got one that's about 180 pounds. The thing is massive, super cool, super tame, but massive. And you have to figure like, once this snake gets older, it's your responsibility to care for it when it gets to be a massive animal. So you really have to think, ladies and gentlemen, this is like a really big message I want you guys to listen to, and it goes for dogs and cats as well. Listen, if you get an animal, then you have to decide that, hey, I'm getting this animal, I'm gonna be responsible for it its whole life. So think ahead. Don't just think to, okay, we have a tiny little cute anaconda here, and they're gonna be you know, super cute and epic for a long time and whatnot, but eventually this is gonna get big, so you have to be able to care for it when it gets big too. Same with like your dogs and your cats. If you're getting a dog or a cat and you get a massive, let's say mastiff, because that's what I have or whatever, you gotta figure a lot of places don't want you moving in with a big giant dog like that. A lot of places have breed restrictions. So you have to think about the future. If you don't own a home, if you're gonna be renting, if you're not in country areas, if you're in city areas, most city areas don't want those big dogs uh, in their rental property. So you have to think ahead and be like, okay, well maybe a teacup Yorkie is what I need for now. And then later on, we'll get a big giant horse dog. You know what I'm saying? All right. Now, this rack is done. Let's move on and see what else we gotta clean here. Got to go to something. You would think, right? Look at this channel. <laughs> you could totally just be like, screw it. Right? So, for the king cobra, it's a little bit different than other cobras. They're snake eaters, they can be switched to rats. Much better to leave these guys in particular on snakes. It's what they eat in the wild, it's healthier for them that way. But, what's different about, I thought the king was another, was another <laughs> <water. laughs> So what's different about these guys is very simple. When a cobra hoods up in a defensive posture, usually they're going straight down. In a hooded posture, they're not gonna be able to move around. These guys are a little bit different. In full hood, they can chase you all around this room. And she's a huge snake. So this one's probably 12 feet. Kevin's probably 13, 14 feet. When he measured that thing, something like that. So it's a very big snake. So you have to wash the entire snake. So obviously the dangerous end is right here, but if he wraps a foot or wraps an arm, or wraps you up in general, you gotta be able to know what you're doing so that you can get yourself out of a situation because if he does wrap you up, you basically have a giant death machine attached to you. She's gonna come apart right here. Martha, can you hear me the double thing that he's got going on there? So I haven't messed with this snake in probably uh, four years, but from what I remember, she's gonna come firing out all over everything. Okay, so this is the one that I had that I raised from a smaller snake. Now again, ladies and gentlemen, I said it a hundred times, Use the safety tools that you have at your disposal. I can't use a hook with a big ass snake like this because I only have half an arm 
and I'm down a finger today too. So it's a lot easier for me to do with these things just, just with my hands. But like I said, I don't recommend it. It's not a good idea for anybody to do it. So, get a better grip on this. Try me to get the lid. Yeah, get the lid for me, Martha. Everybody say hi, Martha. Hi, <laughs> 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 I lost the tip to my tip, bro. Huh. Uh, Shall I even put that back on? That's kind of gross if I put it back on. Do you want me to get Stop, black tape? Dude. <laughs> say what? Black tape and you can wrap it. Paper towel around it. <laughs> well, it's fine. Nothing's not getting inside. You can turn. Face these two right here. That's Chris. Right there, the big tall guy. Not the short one. Not the short two on the tall. Okay, right there, that's Chris. And then Gabby's right next to him. You can check them out too. They have a YouTube channel too. It's called Florida's Wildest. Right? Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Florida's you. Wildest. Yeah, awesome. You can bust that out. I think you guys have a couple of videos. Right? You guys yeah. got like, we got like 50. Yeah. <laughs> I got like 50 videos. No weird. Yeah. Show some support. Yeah, we um, definitely yeah. use it. <laughs> so they do similar stuff. Actually, it's pretty much the same stuff. <laughs> pretty much. But they do a lot more travel. Yeah. So if you guys go over there and bust out to their channel, it's actually fairly entertaining. They do a lot in South America recently, and they got a lot of good footage. So check that out. It's fairly interesting. All right, now we're going to move on and figure out what to do with my tip. Good. All right, so we got... This girl's stuff clean. We're gonna do Kevin next. Generally speaking, ladies and gentlemen, if you're switching snakes, you always switch the water in the bin. So you wanna rinse it out, clean it out, get some new water in there. But for these guys, they're gonna be paired up eventually and everything in here has been quarantined. I mean, obviously we've had this one for years. Kevin's been around for years. We know the snakes and it's the same species, so I'm fairly safe with switching the water without, or switching the snakes without having to switch the water. So we're going to put this thing on back. Yeah. Just got huge. Alright. Can't believe how big this snake has gotten. She was just a little teacup came to her. Oh her. <laughs> She came in. We used to have a lot more king cobras back in the day come in through imports. Now, not so regularly. Everybody has issues keeping king cobras alive. I'm not sure why. It's not that hard as long as you leave them alone. I think the big thing is that when people get king cobras, whether they're using them for a YouTube channel, I'm sure Chris and Gabby know what I'm talking about here, a YouTube channel, or whatever the case may be, but a lot of people get these king cobras, and the first thing they do is take it out, wave a bunch of shit in front of its face, try and get them to stand up and hood up, and, and they do that every day for their pictures, and their Facebook, and their YouTube, and the snakes never eat. And it's real simple, it goes for any snake, especially ones that are imported from the wild. You have to give it some time to acclimate and give it some time to figure out what the hell is going on. But if you take it out every single day, and kick shit in front of his face every single day, it's not going to want to eat. And all that's going to happen is you're going to starve that poor snake to death because it's never going to get used to its surroundings enough to knock down some food. And these are snake eaters too. So I pose it's an extra. Alright, this is the last one here. Then we're gonna wrap this shit up until next time. This is probably, oh it is, the biggest king cobra that I have seen in person. I know our buddy Tom Crutchfield had one that was bigger that has since passed on, but this one is the biggest that I have. Is that something in my fingers? No, they're working in that room. Housekeeping! All right, so there's a big difference in the two cobras that you're about to see. The one that you just saw, much darker in color, is an Indonesian king cobra. So they're both the same species, but it's a locality thing. They come from different parts of the map and the areas that they're found in. This is a Malaysian king cobra. These guys get a little bit bigger. They're much lighter in color. Easy, big boy. Oh, I think Kevin likes the hook very much.
Poof guy. All right, so this guy's huge. Again, the biggest king cobra that I've ever had the pleasure to work with. And he's actually, despite what he's doing, he's not overly aggressive. If he really wants to kill anybody, except for my foot. Jackie, you can actually come close over here. All right, so these guys hit a third of their body length. These guys can reach 18 feet. It's the largest venomous snake on the planet. And these guys can drop a full grown elephant. So you gotta think, I'm not quite as big as an elephant. So he would do, he would do some serious damage to me. But again, he's not super aggressive. Let's get him in this bucket. All right, so we're done cleaning his cage. Simple shit. Again, I'm just here to make sure Chandler has a fantastic life. I'm here to make sure Chandler has a wild life, I guess. I don't know. All right, so, come here, hot stuff. How much would you say he weighs? He's probably like 15, 20 pounds, something like that. Maybe more, I don't know. It's a lot of snake. Let's just put it this way. If I had to like, make my money in a carnival guessing weights, so I'd be fucking this. broke. <laughs> so that's it. All right, we're gonna make sure this shit's locked up here. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna do more of that favor and I'm gonna clean all this mess that the snake made here. And then that's gonna be it. So, that's it. This is how you inadvertently work for somebody who used to work for you and make sure that he has a way better life than you. That's how you do it. Right you love him, Jesus. You're welcome. Don't stand up there. I love you, big guy. All right. Boom. When the sun rises, when the sun